Okay, so the next two lectures are going to diverge from the sort of implementation and systems and theory things that we've been talking about into more applications of MapReduce and problems that MapReduce can be applied to to make them more easily scalable. Um, today I'm going to talk about clustering algorithms and tomorrow Aaron is going to talk about uh, algorithms over graphs. Uh, we're not trying to be exhaustive, we're just trying to present different ways of solving problems using MapReduce to give you kind of an idea of where you can go with this sort of system. Um, so first I'm going to talk about what clustering is, then talk about different things that are clustered, uh, just to give you some intuition on the, prob on the, on the process. Um, then we'll talk about different types of clustering algorithms, talk about k-means clustering, uh, the, and then go into sort of the complexity of those algorithms and why they need to be parallelized and distributed and then work through a sample implementation with MapReduce of k-means clustering with canopy clustering. Um, so what is clustering? Uh, it is the partitioning of a data set into subsets such that the data in each subset contains some common trait. Um, in other words, into sets of data such that the data are proximate according to some defined distance metric. Um, so the question is, where, where do we see this? Um, close to home, we have Google News. Uh, the Google News team clusters incoming news stories by the proximity of being the same story and then feeds them out to you one at a time. Um, the recommendations on Amazon.com uh, cluster products by who has purchased them. Um, Netflix, if you can cluster the Netflix data uh, by who will want to see what movies, they will give you a million dollars. Other less glamorous things are clustered also. Uh, by less glamorous, I clearly mean less e-commerce centric. Um, but hospital records are clustered to discover trends in patient care and uh, disease propagation. DNA subsequences are clustered. Um, sorry. Um, clustering is also used really widely in business practices. For example, survey data uh, or user study data, which is really high dimensional data about companies' products, uh, is clustered to, fi to figure out you know, what markets you want to go into or what products you should be developing. So it's everywhere. So how does this clustering happen? Uh, the fundamental concept is the distance measure, uh, which determines similarity of data points and how they will be grouped. Common distance metrics include Euclidean distance, uh, which is, you know, you have two points, how far away are they? Uh, Manhattan distance, which is, you have two points, how far away are they? If you have to travel on, like, perpendicular city streets. Um, Maximum norm and inner product space are also pretty common, so the angle between two different vectors. Uh, this sampling is pretty analytical, but you can really measure distance by, by anything you want. Moreover, the choice of distance metric that you use really affects your clustering. Um, for example, say you have uh, 0, 0, and 1, 1. The distance between these two points can be root 2, 2, 1, if this is your unit metric, or 11, say, if the distance measure that you're using is alphabetical distance between the first letter of the second coordinate. Um, so, so it really makes a difference. Um, however, choosing your distance metric doesn't decide your clustering. Uh, in fact, depending on which clustering algorithm you use, the results can be non-deterministic. So uh, on to clustering algorithms. Uh, there are two major types of clustering algorithms, uh, hierarchical clustering and partitional clustering. 
Hierarchical clustering algorithms either build up or break down a hierarchy of clusters. Uh, the traditional representation of this is a dendrogram um, or a tree in which one end of the tree is a single cluster containing all of the elements in the set, and the other end of the tree is n clusters where there are n objects in the set, and each set gets its own cluster. Um, so agglomerative hierarchical clustering builds the hierarchy uh, of, of clusters from individual elements by progressively merging clusters until the desired number or strength of clusters is achieved. Uh, on the other hand, divisive hierarchical clustering breaks down a hierarchy from a single cluster until the desired radius or number of clusters is achieved. Uh, for example, up here, the right diagram is a dendrogram of clustering the objects on the left where the distance metric you're using is Euclidean distance. So as you can see, like in the first, in the first merge, you merge the individual clusters of the blue group and the yellow group because distance-wise they are closest together. In the second merge, you merge the green and the purple and you keep going down until everything is in the same cluster. Uh, what fin like the final clustering that you choose is dependent on where in that hierarchy you stop performing either the breaking or the, the combining operation. Um, so if you read this diagram from the top down, this is an agglomerative cluster, and if you read it from the bottom to the top, then it's a divisive cluster. Um, partitional clustering, on the other hand, involves dividing the set into all of the clusters simultaneously. Cool, cool graphic, huh? Um, this, this can be done you know, in one step using a lot of computation or, or over many steps by iterating through what clusters you're using, uh, which we'll see in the next, the next example. Um, so I'm gonna present a super simple type of partitional clustering just to give you a feel for what's going on. So k-means clustering is a super simple partitional clustering. The way it works is you have a data set. You randomly choose a number of clusters, uh, and we can talk about that choice later. And from your data set, you pick k points, and you call those your cluster centers. Then you do the following thing over and over. For each, and actually, I'm going to draw a picture so this, this makes a little bit more sense. Um, so say you have some number n data points, and your k number that you've chosen is 2. So you're going to randomly pick two k centers. So say we randomly pick this one and this point as our k centers. First, you compute the distance from every point to each of the k centers. So for this point, you compute its distance from this one and this one and then you assign the point to the nearest k center. So this point would get here, you go to the next point, um, this is closer over here, 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 and here. Then, for each of the points that are assigned to a k center, you recompute their average location. So over here, the center of these two points is, I don't know, right here, and over here, the center of these five points is probably more over here. Uh, then you replace all of the k centers that you, you did in your original iteration with the k centers you get out of, out of these averages. And then you repeat this computation until the centers converge on a static point. And at that point, you know, you have a pretty good clustering. It's pretty simple. So uh, there's some problems with this. It, it, you know, it works pretty well, it converges. But the complexity is huge. Uh, you've got the number of centers, like for every iteration, so you, your total complexity is the number of iterations times the number of k centers times the number of elements that you have times the amount of computation that you have to do to compute each distance metric. Uh, moreover, this can require, you know, if you have a very large data set, it's possible that that's not all going to fit on a single computer. Uh, which you know increases your your time and exhausts your your resources. So I'm actually okay. 
So, so a solution to this, and I, I'm going to talk about this type of clustering and then, and then come back and, and tie those two together a little bit more. So, so a way to get around this is by implementing canopy clustering. Um, one sec. My slides are out of order. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Canopy clustering helps us parallelize computation by eliminating less influential data dependencies, making the computation faster while keeping the errors minimal. Um, canopy clustering divides a data set into many overlapping subsets or canopies using a super cheap distance metric. And then a, thorough, a more thorough clustering is then performed over the canopies using the original more expensive data metric, distance metric wherein if you are within the same canopy, you calculate the distance between points as usual, but if you are outside of a data points canopy, you simply don't, count, don't calculate the distance between you and that data point. Uh, as, and as detailed in the paper, the results of this are both efficient and accurate. Um, this algorithm is relatively sequential. Um, and relatively simple. Uh, all you do, so you have a data set, you pick a point. Um, I'm actually going to draw this one out too, because it's kind of relevant. Um, so, given a data set of some number of elements, to do the canopy clustering, you pick a random point and say, any point within this, within some distance of this point, is in the same the same cluster, or is in the same canopy. So, say any point that's closer than this one, which we'll call ten away, is in a canopy with this point. We make a second claim that any point that's within a stronger distance of it is cannot cannot now be its own canopy center. So. We recursively go through the data set until all of the points are covered by a canopy. So since this point can't be its own canopy center, we'll make this point the next canopy center. And everything within that range is now in this canopy also. And everything within this range can't be its own canopy center. So we go through the data until everything is covered by this set of overlapping canopies. Um, and as I said earlier, after, after you perform canopy clustering, you then resume hierarchical or partitional clustering as usual, treating objects in separate clusters as being at infinite distances. So now we're actually going to work through a MapReduce implementation of, of these two types of clustering. Um, and our, our goal is to efficiently partition, partition a large data set. Um, and, and for our example, we will use movies that have been rated by users and as, as, our, as our sample um, into a fixed number of clusters using canopy clustering, k-means clustering, um, and a Euclidean distance measure. So first of all, we have to decide on a distance metric. Uh, I am doing this example solely as an illustrative example of how you might parallelize this problem. Um, you will notice a lot of flaws in these metrics. Uh, that, that's okay. Um, so so the, the metric we're going to use for canopy clustering is, say you have a movie in this data set, and 10 people, 10 users have rated this movie. If 10 users have rated, if those same 10 users have rated another movie, then we will say that those two movies are in the same canopy. If 20 other users have rated a separate movie, we will say that those two users or those two movies can't be canopy centers, or can't both be canopy centers. Um, there, there's a variety of, of things we could use for our k-means metric. A reasonable one is like cosine distance of of people who have rated the movie. Um, it's not a very good metric. If you have a good one, Netflix will pay you a lot of money for it. Um, so, 
the, the steps that we're going to break this down into, uh, first of all, you have to get data into a form you can use. Second, you need some parallelized algorithm for picking canopy centers. Third, you need to assign all of the data points to a canopy. Fourth, we're going to pick the k-means clustering centers. And then we're going to run the k-means algorithm over the data, which has been divided into um, canopies. And the first, second, third, and fifth of those steps are MapReduce. Um, getting, getting the data into a form that works is not interesting, but tends to be a huge portion of these problems. Because it means different things if you're working with MapReduce or Hadoop, um, not really going to go into it. Um, so our first, our first real step is selecting canopy centers. And we're going to do this in the following way. So here is our data. We're going to start out by just sending our data out to the mappers. Uh, so we're going to shard the data in any random way and send it to some number of mappers. So let's say the red data is going to mapper A and the blue data is going to mapper B. And realistically, this would be hundreds, but we're going to be simple. So, so here is all the data that has gone to mapper A. We're now going to perform canopy clustering over just this data. So we're going to pick this as our first canopy center. The, the inner line is going to be our strong metric. So this can now not be its own canopy center. And all three of those dots that are, that are included in that are now all considered to be in that canopy. Uh, we'll pick a, a second one, same deal. Pick two more. Now all of our dots. Now all of our dots are covered. Um, apparently, I didn't draw a circle here, but those are within the same distance of that green green dot in the center. So now, so now our red data has been has been shard or has been has been clustered with canopies. So we go back to to our full data set. So now we've got the red and green points, which all went to set A, and we've got the dark blue points, which went to mapper B. But the dark blue points were also clustered. And so the lighter blue points are now the canopy clusters that are the canopy centers that the dark blue data came up with. And those are now the canopy centers that are being sent to the reducer. So in each mapper is going to, to emit a list of canopy centers. All of those will be sent to the reducer. And now the exact same thing is going to happen in the reducer. So the reducer is going to take all the canopy centers and perform canopy clustering on them. This one, that one, all of those are now going to be canopy centers. And what this has the effect of doing is eliminating redundant canopy centers. Um, that might have been kind of hard to follow, but does anybody see an obvious problem with this? Do you have a slick and easy solution to that? Uh, did everyone hear what he said? So, so Say this. Say you pick this red point over here as your canop as your canopy center in this in this thing. Then you've eliminated this this canopy center, which was determined earlier. Now, what if there was a point over here that was covered by this center, but not by that center? Then that will now not be covered um, by your canopies. However, there are a lot of really easy uh, like two second fixes to this, which I will leave to the audience uh, <laughs> as an exercise. Um, okay, so <laughs> we now have a final set of canopy centers which gets written out to disk. Sweet. Now we want to assign points to canopies. Actually, it's easier if your simple fix to that problem goes into this step. Um, so here, here are our centers. Here was our original data. So now this is our data. Um, and we want to assign each point to a canopy center, which is pretty easy. Any questions on that step? Awesome. OK. So it's now time to, to do our, our k-means map. Say we start out with this, this set of data. And these are the canopies that, that cover this data. We now want to perform the k-means algorithm that I outlined earlier over this data. Um, we have already selected some number of centers. Uh, the k-means algorithm relies on you selecting on your own a number like the k centers, um, it compensates for this for this somewhat ambiguous goal by saying by being easy enough 
and quick enough that you can run it several times until you get a number of canopy centers that works well for your data. Um, so say that we have picked these points to be our canopy centers because we've run this several times before and we know that this is an appropriate number of, or k-mean centers for this data. We then begin performing the, the k-means algorithm. So each, each canopy center we're gonna say, we're gonna just represent with a different color. And then we're going to associate all of the other points with the canopy center which they are closest to, and we're totally going to ignore points that are not in the same canopy. So, so now each point is associated with a K center. Right? So next step, we then average each of the different colors of points and move the K center to the new average. So I don't know if you noticed, but, but the red center and the orange center moved kind of a little bit, or I guess the green center and the orange center, both moved more into the center of their data. Um, we then iterate this several more times, and yeah, we get data, we get K centers in the center of our data, and we have a relatively coherent clusters. I'm not sure what happened to that orange one. Maybe that's in the right place. Um, okay, so after we do this, we iterate the k-means algorithm until those points converge. Uh, and this number is also left to the user, and, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to calculate whether or not that point is still moving. Um, you kind of, the most efficient place to do that is, is at the elbow criterion, um, which is a rule of thumb to determine, uh, Sorry. Um, so the elbow criterion applies both to how many times you run your iterations and how many, how many clusters you, you originally want to get. Um, yeah, so at any rate, that was the, that's an implementation of clustering with MapReduce. Uh, it's pretty efficient. Um, Tomorrow we're going to talk about graph algorithms with Aaron. And that's it. Any questions? Yes? Does MapReduce apply also to other loops part of that, or is it just to the end of it? Yes, it does. Oh my god, I shouldn't have taken this off. Oh my god. Um, yeah, it does. Because when you send out data to each of the mappers in the k-means step, uh, you only have to send out data about the k centers which are in the same canopy, which really reduces the amount of... So no, it doesn't... Like, it's not a strict like map operation, but it does really help with that part of the computation. Other questions? Cool.